Today's video is on integers. Integers are three sets of numbers. They're either positive whole numbers, negative whole numbers, or the number zero. A very common way to, de to describe integers are temperatures. As you can see in the three thermometers uh, in this uh, diagram, uh, that you have a temperature that's very, very high, over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, a temperature that's very, very low. It's actually below zero. If you look at the tick mark right there, it's actually a negative 10 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And then this would be like a standard temperature, uh, you know, mid-spring or, or, or fall of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, as you can see, the comparison for our temperature is its relationship with zero. And that's going to be a major focus for how we deal with positive and neg negative numbers in this unit. Uh, so like I said before, there are three types of integers. You have your negative integers, which are numbers preceded by a negative sign. And negative in integers are written with a negative sign, so you always know that it's a negative integer. You have positive integers, which are numbers that are the standard numbers you normally are used to working with. And again, they're whole numbers, um, but uh, positive integers can be written with or without a positive sign. You know, if you think about when you were younger and you were adding numbers, your, your teacher wasn't saying positive 2 plus positive 3 equals positive 5. It was just 2 plus 3 is 5. And then the third um, integer, and probably the most important integer, is 0. Um, now, 0 uh, is, is kind of the goal of all integers is to identify the relationship between zero and all numbers. Um, it's important to recognize that integers do have opposites. So a positive nine's opposite is negative nine. And you'll look at the relationship and you'll notice that the distance from negative nine to zero is the same distance as positive nine is to zero. And as we get into the further units, you'll learn about absolute value and understand that, that understand, understand that importance. So um, we're gonna take a look here at some examples where you're asked to graph the integer and its opposite. So the integer given is negative 3, and we're going to graph that right on the number line at negative 3. And the opposite of negative 3 will be positive 3. So we'll graph that. And so that's all you're asked to do when you're identifying the integer and its opposite. And again, you're recognizing that the value is how close it is to 0. And you'll notice that they will be consistent every time. So when we're asked to graph 4 and its opposite, obviously the 4 will be right here, and its opposite will be negative 4. And again, you'll see that their relationship with zero is going to be equidistant. It's a little harder when you're asked to graph uh, integers on, and its opposite when they're large uh, integers or, or small integers um, because of their distance. Um, it's important for us to recognize that if we're going to do both the integer and its opposite, we do want zero in the center of our number line. But we've got to identify a good um, interval setup so that our striations are all equally distributed. So because 30 um, you know, is, is a fairly large number, I certainly can't count by ones or twos here. I'm going to go ahead and count by fives. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And you'll notice that when I count out my 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 in negative numbers, I'm counting from zero and counting out. So they're like a, a mirror image of the numbers that I just placed. And you'll see again that all of my opposites will be uh, graphed the same distance from zero. So positive 30 and negative 30, again, are the same distance from zero or equidistant from, from zero. Um, I'm going to go ahead and also do the negative 150. Obviously, counting by fives, I wouldn't have enough room on this number line. So again, I want my zero to be in the middle. And then I'm going to identify a number that I think is good for counting by. Uh, intervals. Uh, a good rule of thumb is to use numbers that are used in our American currency system. You know, you've got your your one penny, your five cents, your ten cents, your twenty-five cents, fifty cents, a dollar. These are all very good numbers to count by. They're easy to skip count. It's not easy to skip count by, let's say, uh, eights or sevens. Uh, you know, once you get get past your basic facts. So uh, we want to make sure that we're counting by numbers that are easy to count by for our intervals. So because I'm going to 150, I'm going to count by 50s. So 50, 100, 150. And then again, 50, 100, 150. And again, these would be our negative integers. And then again, when it's time to graph those integers and their opposites, they will be equidistant from 0. It's important to use number lines as a way to, uh, to, to, to uh, label your integers. And I want you to know that both vertical and horizontal number lines work. This would be a horizontal number line. This would be a vertical number line. Uh, but you can see that the same information 
could be labeled on either. So if I wanted to graph, let's say, 4 and its opposite, oh, it looks like I'm missing some negative signs here. So 4 and its opposite, um, I could just go ahead and, and graph 4 and its opposite, and you could see that their distance from 0 is equal. And on the vertical number line, 4 and its opposite are also equidistant from 0. So um, obviously there are some circumstances where a vertical number line makes a lot more sense, whether you're dealing with thermometer or a sea level. Um, but a horizontal number line is more appropriate for timelines uh, and that type of thing. Um, number lines are a great way to order and compare um, integers, but it's also important when we're dealing with fractions or um, decimals. Uh, understand that these are not integers because they're not whole numbers, but the same concept is related. So when I'm asked to graph um, two and a half and its opposite, uh, you know, you can see here's where two is, here's where three is, so two and a half would be here. And the opposite of two and a half is clearly negative two and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that. Now a lot of people accidentally will graph that between the two and the one because they're used to reading left to right. But remember, when you're doing a negative two and a half, it's going to be um, on the farther side of two because it's between two and three. Um, it's important when you're graphing on a, on a number line, if it's not the exact point that's labeled, like this would be negative two and this is negative three, it's a good idea to go ahead and maybe along with that point, label what it is that you're graphing. So in this case, negative two and a half and two and a half. Um, so we're going to take a look at this negative four fifths. And remember, negative four fifths would be less than one. So that's going to be graphed right here. Four fifths would be here. The marker's a little thick. And negative four fifths would be here. And again, you always want to make sure that they're equidistant to zero. Um, we're going to do negative 3.5. Let's see if I can get a marker. It's going to work a little better. Uh, negative 3.5 would be between 3 and 4. So negative 3.5 would be right there. And then positive 3.5 would be right there. You'll notice my positive numbers. I'm not labeling with a positive sign, although I certainly could. It would uh, not change the value. And then the last one we're going to do 5.25 and again you know you've got to obviously space it out this would be the halfway point between 5 and 6 so 5.25 would go right there and then the negative 5.25 again this would be the halfway point between 5 and 6 so here's where the negative 5.25 would be all right, so one other uh, main focus that we're going to be doing during this unit with dealing with integers is identifying a positive or negative integer that would represent a situation. So uh, here's some situations that do include uh, positive or negative whole numbers. Uh, Lisa puts $14 in her piggy bank. That would obviously be a positive 14. Um, you're playing a game and must go back four spaces. This would be a negative situation. Claire loses five points on a spelling test. The football team scores 21 points. Your dad gains 5 pounds. Addison gets 4 bonus points on the science test. The temperature drops 14 degrees. You take $21 out of your bank account. So these are all integer situations that are all real life connections. So you want to realize how much that their relationship with zero has a lot to do with these situations. And then finally, you're asked to identify integers that are on a number line. You can see that this number line has zero in the middle and it's counting by fives, um, but there are striations in between. So when you're asked to graph um, what the location for A is, it's right on the negative 10. So that one's pretty easy. Uh, letter B is, you can see, two units past 15, so that would be a positive 17. Letter C is, you can see as we count up, five, six, seven, eight, that would be a positive eight. And letter D is going backwards this way. So again, we're counting from 0 in this direction. It would be 16, 17, again, negative 17. All right, well, thank you for sticking around till the end. Good luck with your integer work.